Welcome friends to your North Pole Paint at Home Kit. I'm so excited that we get to create this amazing painting together today. So let's open up your kit, get everything set up so we can get started. Inside your kit today, you'll find that you've got a brown piece of paper, so go ahead and open that up and set it down on whatever surface you're working on and that'll keep it clean and protected. You'll also find that you've got a blue paper towel that we'll use for cleaning our brushes. You'll find that you've got four brushes and a Q-tip. We'll use those for painting today. You've got a pre-drawn canvas inside of your kit. Along with that, you've got your paint palette and a dish. You're more than welcome to add some of your paint colors straight onto that dish that you have. And then go ahead and get a glass about half full with water that we can use for rinsing out our paint brushes today. So once you've got that set up, we're ready to paint. And I'm gonna take this original painting and I'm gonna set it off to the side. All right, so let's get started together. The very first thing that I want to give you are just a few quick tips on how to make painting a little bit easier today. Whenever we paint with our brushes, there's a couple ways that we can use our brushes. We can paint with the long flat sides of our brushes which helps to get along some of these hard to reach edges. Also, we can paint with the very flat side of our brush or the edge of our brush that can help to make some really sharp, straight lines anywhere we need to get in nice and tight. So we've got a nice big square brush that we're gonna use and we're gonna use that for around the snow globe today. I've also included some smaller square brushes these are some of my favorite brushes. I use these for most of the painting. They cut into really nice tight spaces. I like to use the flat side and I also like to use the edge of the brush. So I'll be referring to both of those kind of terms when I paint today, the flat side or straight up and down along that corner edge. And then the third brush that I included is this round brush just very nice and small. And then I like to hold this where the gold part meets the blue part. And I hold it just like a pencil right here on the barrel. And then I'll put just a little bit of paint every time right on the tip of the brush. And I'll use a very light touch when I'm painting. And I'll just barely tap the canvas with the paint. So that way I'm not smooshing the brush on the canvas and splattering the bristles everywhere and possibly splattering the paint everywhere. Also keep in mind that you have the freedom at home to lift up your canvas and you can turn and rotate your canvas in any direction that you'd like to when you're painting so that you can reach in some of those hard to reach places. All right, so let's get started. All right, the first spot that we're gonna paint is gonna be the inside of the snow globe. And it's gonna be the background sky of our snow globe. So we're gonna create this beautiful winter sky kind of up by this North Pole, this icy aqua blue color. So I'm going to choose the smaller of the two square brushes. So I've got that large square and the smaller square brush. Now, depending on where you're painting, sometimes the paint can start to get feel a little bit thick. So what I'll do is I'll just take the edge of the bristles of my brush and get them a little bit wet, just so it's a little bit wet to the finger, but not dripping wet. I'm gonna take a little bit of my white paint and I'll pull it off just a little bit onto the foam plate and I'll add a little bit of that gorgeous aqua color, not the blue, but that really pretty aqua color to the white. And then I'm gonna come into the snow globe and I'm gonna start to paint kind of really short brush strokes back and forth right inside of the snow globe. And then every time I go back to refill my paintbrush, I can add a little bit of water if I'd like to thin the paint out. And that's only if my paint is feeling a little bit sticky. And then I can come back and begin to paint along the inside edges of the round part of the snow globe. And what I love about this technique 
is every time I go back for new color, the colors are gonna change just a little bit. So I'll have some areas that are a little bit darker and a little bit lighter, and that's gonna make that really cool textured winter sky. So I'm gonna do all around the North Pole sign. And I'm moving my brush back and forth, kind of in short little spurts. Just grabbing a little bit of paint each time. Another quick tip for you also, is if you have any paint on your canvas that might be a huge glob of paint, you wanna make sure that you use up all that paint and press it down into your canvas so the paint has a chance to dry nice and even. So the great thing about having a video is you can pause the video anytime you need to. To repeat a step, you can just move back on the video or if I'm moving a little bit slower and you're painting a little bit faster, you can fast forward the video to the next step. So I'm using the flat side of the square brush right now to paint along the outside of the North Pole. As I move up towards the top of the North Pole sign, I'm gonna use the edge of my brush to help me get into some of those smaller spots. And this brush isn't full of too many bristles, so it has that nice sharp edge on it. Makes it really nice to paint with. So every time I come back to the paint, I'm grabbing white and aqua. And I love how every time I grab the paint, it changes the sky a little bit with the color. It almost gives me the feeling that there are some really beautiful glaciers up by the North Pole. The great thing about painting at home also is you can switch brushes at any time, so don't feel like you have to stay with this square brush. If you wanna to try to switch to a round brush to get into some of the tiny spaces, you can absolutely do that. Just use your water to rinse out any of the brushes you use in between so they're nice and clean so when we switch colors. So to get inside, this is the wreath to the North Pole and to get right in between the pole and the wreath, there's a little bit of that sky peeking through from inside the snow globe. So I'm gonna use the edge of my brush. I'm gonna just grab that little piece of sky from the snow globe. And I'm gonna come around by Santa's face. Now there are some really great holiday and winter village 
um, minifigures that Lego has. And this particular Lego um, is so sweet. So I decided to put him into a snow globe. Okay, so I'm gonna come down by Santa's feet. Nice little boot. All right, that sky is looking really cool. So I guess if you're from Alaska, if I had the chance to visit from there, I'm not from Alaska, but I think they call all the states underneath the lower 50. Um, but I did get a chance to go to Alaska and um, visit some of the most amazing sites up there. And I did get to tour some of the glaciers that were up there and they were this gorgeous color that we're painting right now. I was absolutely awestruck. The beauty was breathtaking, and I still, to this day, cannot get over the gorgeous colors that the ice um, was. It was just magnificent and pristine and beautiful. So every time I paint with this awful color, it reminds me of the time that I was able to go and um, see the glaciers in Alaska. All right, so I'm going to be careful down by Santa's toy sack. There might be something in there for me this year. Hopefully I was good. I went around his little cute little Santa suit. Perfection, look at that. Very nice. So I'm gonna take a quick peek while I have these colors out and look to see if there's any spots that I might have missed. But I'm really happy with how that turned out. So I'm gonna take this brush over to my cup. I'm gonna push the brush all the way to the bottom of the cup to rinse that out and I'm going to grab my towel, give it a scrub on the bottom of the cup, tap it out on the glass. I'm going to catch the brush in my towel, give it a little squeeze between my thumb and then I'll have a nice clean brush to work with. So I'm going to set my towel to the side and then we're going to be ready to start with our next color. Next, we're gonna go ahead and paint all of the white inside of our pitcher so that it has a time to set up and dry when we add our other colors on top. So the two paint brushes that we're gonna use are probably going to be the square brush and the round brush. And you can switch between the two throughout this step um, as many times as you need to, whichever brush works the best for you. For the most part, I'm gonna stick with this square brush because I really enjoy painting with either the flat side or this angle brush. Whichever one works for you, use that one and you'll do a great job. All right, we're gonna start with the North Pole. So I'm gonna find a clean spot in the white paint. And I'm not going to rinse my brush. It's already been rinsed, so it's already a little bit wet and it's already clean. And I'm gonna paint the inside of the North Pole sign. I'm going to go right over those black letters and I'm going to lay a base coat of white paint which will help with the brown sign that we're going to paint in a little bit. So I'm just going to add one nice thin white coat of paint. So same principle, 
you want to make sure that you push out any lumps of paint. We don't want any gobs of paint. Good, and then on our pole, this is going to be black. This part is black. Our first tier is red. And then the part right behind the star is going to be white. So I'm gonna take some paint and I'm gonna color this first little background white. And I'm not too worried about going over any of the black marks on the canvas, those are our guidelines. And then we can come back and clean up those black lines at the very end. The next tier is red. So right underneath the wreath, this next part is going to be white. So that's where we have the two pieces of the Legos that connect together. So we're connecting a red Lego to a white Lego to a red Lego and underneath the wreath is white. And we're painting this white even though the canvas is white because we don't want to leave it a bare color. It'll really be obvious when the entire painting is covered. Then we've got red and our next piece is white. Now, does it matter if you accidentally get these out of order? Of course not, because these are just our Lego um, pieces that snap together. So if you went white, red, white, red, or red, white, red, white, it's not gonna matter. It's still gonna look gorgeous. Okay, beautiful. So now our North Pole sign is done. We have the back of the sign, a white Lego piece, white, and white. So I've got three pieces painted on the North Pole, including the sign. So we're gonna jump over to Santa Claus. I'm going to paint the little pom-pom on his hat and the brim of his hat right over his eyebrows. I'm gonna paint this little pom-pom. And again, if I go over the black lines, that's okay. I'm gonna clean all of the black lines up at the very end of the painting. I'm going to do the brim of this hat. Again, I'm just using a tiny bit of white paint. I'm going to come in and add a little bit of paint to Santa's eyebrows because he has some nice white bushy eyebrows. Next, I'm going to do Santa's beard. Very nice. And then I'm going to do this entire area at the bottom of the snow globe where all of the snow has fallen and settled at the bottom. So I'm gonna to continue to use my square brush. I'm just painting one nice thin coat of white paint. And it's a little hard to see on camera because it just looks like I'm doing really absolutely nothing to the canvas because the white looks absolutely the same. The great thing about having this at home is at least you can see it where you put the white paint, it's a little bit shiny because the paint is wet. I'm gonna set my square brush in the water and I'm gonna switch to my round brush and then I'm gonna paint in right underneath Santa's beard where his collar is, right above his belt, and then this squiggly little puff of fur that's right along his top. 
And those are those cute little places that Santa Claus has that are his fur, this faux fur lined Santa suit to keep him nice and warm way up high in the North Pole. And then two more places that will be painted white are going to be his Santa Claus hands because his mittens are white. And we can't have his hands freezing off and turning into icicles. Because he has a lot of packages to deliver. So on this big hand right here in front of me, I'm gonna go right over those black lines that are on the inside. I'm not worried about those at all. Oh, he's so grateful to have nice warm hands. All right, so I'm gonna review all those white spots one more time, and then we're going to move on to the new color. Hooray! All right, so white, we had the North Pole sign. We had one, two, three pieces on the North Pole sign that are white. We have Santa's pom-pom on his hat, the brim on his hat and his beard, and his two bushy little eyebrows. We have the little snuggly fur right underneath his chin on his Santa suit, and right here on his Santa suit, and of course his two mittens. And then we have this huge snowbank that Santa Claus is standing on. So let's go ahead and rinse out our two brushes and then we'll be ready to start our next color, which is going to be green. Time for green. So let's liven up our pitcher with some holiday wreath green. I'm gonna grab the round brush for this color because it's the easiest one for me to paint with. I'm gonna grab this really pretty green and I'm gonna come over to our Christmas wreath by the star and I'm gonna paint one nice thin coat of green paint for our Christmas wreath. So I'm gonna start on one side of the wreath and using little tiny brush strokes. I'm gonna follow the circle of that wreath all the way around from one side of the star all the way up and around to the other side. Oh, such a good color, I love it. All right, for the package, I also chose green for the package just so we could have a little bit more of that gorgeous green color. Now, if you wanna use a different color for the package, of course you can do that. The only color that I don't recommend is red because it might get a little lost next to Santa Claus suit but of course you can use any color that you want to. So if you want a green bow and a yellow package, you can do that. If you would like a blue bow and a green package, you can use any color that you want to. Again, my only recommendation is maybe not a red package right next to the red Santa Claus suit because those two colors might blend a little bit and be hard to see. So go ahead and choose the color for your present and let's paint in our present. So I'm gonna paint in the actual box of the present first, and then I'm gonna paint the bow in just a little bit, because the bow will cover up any mistakes that I make on the package. So let's do the packaging first, and then we'll come back and do the bow in just a little bit.
I wonder whose gift that is that he's holding. I'm telling you guys, it could be my gift. the new brick set at Bricks and Minifig. Maybe it's a surprise set that we've never seen before. That would be amazing, guys. All right, and there we have it. I'm gonna rinse out my round brush and then we're gonna start our next color. So our wreath and our present looks gorgeous. We're gonna move on and we're gonna paint Santa Claus face. I'm gonna use the round brush that we just cleaned and we're gonna paint Santa Claus face in the classic Lego yellow color. So I'm gonna to go to the light yellow color that was in our paint kit, the classic light yellow color. I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit on the tip of my brush and I'm gonna turn my painting so that Santa Claus is more right in front of me so that way I don't have to reach so far. With just a very little bit of paint on the end of my round brush, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in Santa Claus face. So here's my tip. Sometimes it's hard to paint around the eyes. You can paint right over those eyes and you can still see the marks of the marker behind it. And then when we go to paint black, we can paint right over the yellow paint. Whichever way is easier for you. For me, I'm just gonna paint right over the eyes but I'm gonna be really careful not to go over the eyebrows. Ta-da! I'm gonna go ahead and turn my painting back straight up and down. I'm gonna use the same brush without rinsing it, and I'm gonna go over to the dark yellow color. Grabbing some dark yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my bow, and I'm gonna paint in the star. So this is kind of fun too. It's your custom painting and your creativity. So if you chose a different color for the bow, this is where you can do that now. So maybe you wanted a blue bow or maybe you did want a red bow and that's absolutely fine. It's your amazing masterpiece and your creativity. So another fun thing that you can do is you might want to add a few polka dots to your Christmas present. So I'm gonna add a few polka dots to my Christmas present because that is what my creativity wants to do right now. Because I'm telling you something, I still think that present might be for me. Maybe that was my secret Christmas wish. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna move on to the star by the sign for the North Pole. Now, I'm a little worried that I might drag my hand across my wet paint, so I'm just gonna turn my picture so that it faces me. So the star is right in front of me, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the entire star. Wow, guys, I wish I could just climb right in this snow globe and open up that present. I'm going to turn my painting the correct way. I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're going to get ready for our next color, which is going to be brown because we're going to paint Santa sack and the sign for the North Pole. Yeah. 
let's pick up our square brush and let's get the very tip end of the bristles wet for this one. I'm going to tap them off on a towel just to make sure my brush doesn't drip. And again, it's not dripping wet, it's just a little damp to the touch. I'm going to grab a little bit of the brown paint on my paintbrush and I'm going to show you a really cool way to paint Santa's toy stack. I'm going to start at the bottom right where the snow is and I'm going to start with the edge of my paintbrush and I'm going to follow the line that curves up the side of Santa's toy stack. So I'm going to start at the snow line and I'm going to curve it up kind of like a windshield wiper. So I'm going to grab just a little bit more water and I'm thinning the paint out just a tiny bit. Not a lot. I don't want drippy wet paint everywhere. I just want it a little bit of paint. I'm going to follow that line. And what's really cool about this is this paint is a little bit um, see-through so I can see my brush marks. So I can see these kind of curved lines that my brush is making. My dark red ended up a little bit high on my paint plate over here, so I'm trying to avoid hitting that. So I've got these really cool curved lines that make Santa's toy sack look really full. So now I'm going to take my paintbrush over here and I'm going to follow the outline going up and over. Up and over. And one more up and over the other side of the sack. And this is going to look like the bag is folding over. So it looks like there are a ton of toys in Santa's bag. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to paint the little top folds of Santa's bag. So this is one way that I like to paint Santa's bag. Now if you want to paint the bag one solid, solid color of brown, you can come back and paint a second coat on this once it dries and it'll be one solid coat of brown. For me, I like to see how the lines look from the paintbrush because it kind of makes the bag look like it has a little bit of texture, which makes it look like material. I'm going to do the same thing up here for the sign for the North Pole. I'm going to start with the edge of my brush. I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of paint. I'm going to turn my painting so that it faces me and I'm going to start at the top edge and I'm going to drag my brush across and back in long lines so the sign looks like it's made out of wood. So instead of just kind of painting lines wherever I want to and moving the brush all crazy, I'll just move my brush back and forth so it looks like hopefully lines back and forth, kind of like wood. And I'll still be able to see my black letters through so we can trace those a little bit later. I'm going to turn my picture facing straight again. I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're all done with brown and we're going to move on to a brand new color. Finally, the color that I have been waiting for, red. This gorgeous, beautiful, red color has been screaming out to me on my plate. I'm going to start with this really cute little round brush and I'm going to start with the pole that says the North Pole on it. 
I'm gonna get the very tip bristle of my brush wet and I'm gonna drag a little bit of paint to the side. So this red paint is a little bit thicker. It's a super, super heavy paint, which means that it should cover with one coat so it's not a super thin paint. So what I'm doing with my brush is I'm just thinning out the paint a little bit because I have a couple little tiny spots to paint with red and I don't want a lot of blobs of paint on the end of my brush. So right above the North Pole sign, right here, is going to be painted red. So by adding just a little bit of water to it, that red is gonna thin out and it'll help me to get in that little tiny space a whole lot better. So if you need to turn your canvas to the side again, please feel free to do that. Right underneath the North Pole sign, with just the tiniest bit of paint, there's one little tiny line in red. We've got red, white, and right here, right above the wreath, is going to be red. White, red, white, red. So do not worry. So say you accidentally painted a Lego piece the wrong color, don't worry about it. So say you accidentally painted this one red, then go ahead and paint that one red, and then come back and paint that piece white, paint that one red, and then paint that piece white. Just make sure your red dries completely before you paint any new white, else you'll end up with pink. And remember, if your paint starts to get thick, just thin it out with a tiny, tiny bit of water at the end of your bristles. gorgeous. Now on to Santa Claus. So I'm going to turn Santa Claus so he's straight in front of me. And I'm going to start with the hat on Santa Claus. So remember that right here is white and his pom-pom is white. Next, we're gonna paint the torso of Santa Claus and the two legs, the leg on both the right and the left, but not the center in between. So the whole time I'm just sticking with the round brush I like this one. I can get into those really kind of detailed spots on Santa Claus. So 
So again, my trick is just a tiny bit of water will help thin that paint out so that you can push the paint into all these little tiny cracks and crevices. I'm coming underneath that nice little fur lining on Santa's jacket and underneath this mitten on his hand. And you'll see that it really doesn't take very much red paint at all. And then very carefully on his side next to his white mitten. And then I'll come down and work on the legs, but not the center between the legs. That's going to be a shadow where I'm going to use the darker red. really nice. And so the only part that I've got left to do on Santa in the red is going to be up here by his arm. I've got the shoulder of the arm that fits into the torso right here. So I'm going to come into the shoulder and then I'm going to paint down. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white space but I'm going to come in with some of that darker red in just a little bit and then that will show the difference between where the arm goes and where the torso goes. And then I'm just going to curve it over to where Santa's mitten is. So that way we have a difference between the arm and the actual side of Santa Claus. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out this small round brush and since I've got it clean and in my hand I'm going to move over to this dark red color that I've got and again if it's feeling a little bit thick from sitting out if you kept it out of the bottle and put it on your plate I'm going to just add a tiny bit of water to it and I'm going to paint in between the space of the two Lego legs and then that'll give us a shadow which will help to break up the mini fig um, legs on Santa and that'll look really cool. I'm going to paint the shoulder above the shoulder and down the torso of the mini fig all the way to the mitten. And then I'm going to paint the entire arm that we haven't done that's holding the present. So just be really careful because everything is still wet. You don't want to rub your hand across the wet paint. We're giving him a little bit of shadow. I'm giving him a little bit of depth right in here. And then you'll see there's one little square that we still haven't touched and we're going to grab that towards the very, very end of the painting. While we still have this color, there's a bend that comes down and this is where 
part of the joints are for the Lego figures. So this curve that comes down, if we go straight across to the present and straight across, I'm gonna paint a line in this dark red color. And it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be completely solid, but this is gonna show where the bend of that minifigure is. And then also, there's this little corner that comes off of Santa that goes right under his mitten all the way to the corner of the present. So if I go from the corner of the present all the way over this part right here is the very bottom part of Santa's top or Santa's suit. And we're going to just add a little bit of that dark color just to give it a little bit of dimension and depth. And when that dries and we add our details, that is going to look sensational. So we're done with the dark red. We're done with the red on Santa's suit. And I'm done with the small red brush. I'm gonna rinse it off and I'm gonna switch over to a square brush. I'm gonna turn the canvas so that it's sideways. And I'm gonna start with the base of the snow globe. So I've got this band that's going to kind of represent Santa's belt at the base of the snow globe. So this part right here in the middle is gonna be black. On either side, I'm gonna use this gorgeous cherry red color and I'm gonna paint the top and the bottom stand of the snow globe in that same gorgeous color as Santa's suit. So the same thing applies. If your paint is hard to spread or it's feeling a little sticky, just barely break the top of the water with a paintbrush. Grab a little bit of water and dab it in your paint and that'll help thin out the paint for you so it spreads a little bit easier. So I'm going to go down to the very bottom and I'll grab a little water if I need some help thinning that out. All right, so I went out of the lines a little bit, so I just straightened up that line, and then I'm gonna come back and paint the lap in there. So I'm not too worried about going out of the lines. I will fix that in a little bit. All right, gorgeous job. I love this color. I'm done with it, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush, and then we are going to move on to black, and we're really gonna see this painting start to pop and come to life. Let's grab a square brush, and we'll start with black. I'm gonna rotate my picture so the North Pole is right in front of me. That way I'll give the red a chance to dry. I'm gonna take my square brush into black paint and I'm gonna start with the top of the North Pole and I'm gonna paint this in with some black paint. And then using the edge, I'm gonna go right underneath the pole and I'm gonna grab the stand that the pole sits on. I 
I'm done with this brush, so I'm going to let it sit in the cup of water and I'm going to switch to my round brush. We want to make sure that all of the red has been rinsed out of it. And I'm going to turn my pitcher so that Santa Claus is right in front of me. So we have just a little bit of black to paint with Santa Claus. So I'm going to take the tip of my brush. I'm going to put it in the water and I'm going to roll the brush between my fingers so I get a nice sharp tip to my brush and the very first thing I'm going to tackle are going to be the eyes on Santa Claus. I'm going to grab just a tiny tiny bit of black paint on the end of my paintbrush and I'm going to dab in the black eyes for Santa Claus. So I start with the tiniest amount of black paint and very carefully and moving very slowly. I'm gonna paint in Santa Claus eyes. Nice job. Next we're gonna paint in the belt for the suit for Santa Claus. Sensational. Let's turn our picture right side up. Grabbing a clean square brush, I'm going to go ahead and finish the belt part of the snow globe in black. And what I love about this is if I got red in between where I didn't want it, the black is going to go right over it and cover that up. Let's go ahead and rinse out our brushes and we'll get ready for our next color. So now we're ready to add our finishing touches onto our painting. So I'm going to show you how to do some outlining in black to help your picture pop out if you'd like. Then we're going to add some of our highlights and our lowlights to our picture and our finishing touches in the snow. And then we're going to add our background to our canvas at the very end. So I'm going to start with the round brush and I'm going to show you how to add our black outlines to our picture. So we're going to be kind of moving back and forth with some of our black outlines as we finish up today. So I'm going to start with Santa and again I'm going to rotate the picture so that Santa is right in front of me as I work with him. I'm going to dip the tip of the brush into the water and I'm going to take a little bit of the black. So I'm making almost like the consistency of black ink, almost like a black ink pen. So when I put it on a piece of paper and I drag my paintbrush, it feels like a little bit of watercolor, um, feels like a little bit like a ballpoint pen. 
And I'm going to hold my brush again where the silk, where the gold meets the blue. And every time I do any type of movement, I'm going to think about using it just like a pencil, just like I'm tracing a line. So I'm going to start with the line right underneath Santa Claus eyes and very, very lightly, almost like I'm trying to tickle the canvas or brush a little tiny feather or a little tiny baby hair off the canvas. I'm going to very lightly trace that line with that very thin black paint that I made. And I'm grabbing just a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna come up along underneath this cap. I'm gonna outline his eyebrows. His pom-pom. Underneath the brim of his hat. along the top of this hat. I'm not gonna lie, outline every place on Santa Claus, just a few places that will help him pop off the canvas just a little bit and give him some character. I'm gonna outline the outside of his beard. And that little bit of fur right underneath his chin. And very carefully, I'm going to turn Santa Claus. So now that his face is nice and bolded, I'm going to go ahead and do the fur right underneath his chin, going down to his belt. And the one going across his belly. going to wiggle that paintbrush back and forth. I'm going to come up around this mitten, outline this bag to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more like it's popping off the canvas. I'm going to start at the bottom and follow the top line around. And down to the snow but I'm not going to outline where the snow is. So Santa Claus looks like he's back, the bag looks like it's a little bit forward. Going over to the sign on the North Pole is, is entirely up to you again. All of this is optional. If you'd like to outline the pole in black again you're more than welcome to or you can leave it just how it is. So I'm just going to touch up a couple of the lines in black I'm going to re-outline the star, but I'm gonna leave the wreath alone. I'm also gonna leave the sign for the North Pole alone. For the inside lettering for the North Pole, you could use a Sharpie marker if you wanted to trace over those letters, or you could use the black paint I don't recommend washable markers when you're tracing 
over the letters just so they don't bleed. So those are right now all the tub ships that I want to do in black. Um, later on I'm going to do the outline for the snow globe but that's going to be at the very end. So great job. Using the same brush I'm going to use the very back side. I'm going to tap it into white and I'm going to give Santa two gleams of white in his eyes so that they come alive. So very carefully I'm going to rinse out this ground brush and we're going to do some highlighting on his cap and on the back. So making sure my brush is nice and clean, I'm going to use this round brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of white paint and then I'm going to tap it off onto a clean spot on my plate so the brush is very dry to the touch. So some highlighting that I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight right along the very top of Santa Claus hat. I'm going to follow the curve of Santa's hat. I'm going to follow the curve of his shoulder coming down. And then I'm going to go along the outside of his arm. Now he's really going to start to pop off the page and really come to life. Right along the top of his boot, I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight. A little reflection from the snow along the very top of the sack, following the curve of the toy sack, we're gonna grab a little bit of reflection. Oh, that looks really neat. Coming over to the sign for the North Pole, we're gonna add a little bit of highlight right along the top of the sign to the North Pole right along the bulb on the top. So just a little bit of white highlight. Sensational. So let's grab a flat square brush, just a small one. I'm gonna set that in the water. Keeping my picture turned to the side, I'm gonna grab some white paint and I'm gonna be pretty generous now with this flat, small square brush. And I'm gonna start to tap some snow onto my North Pole sign. So this is one of the reasons why if you're using a Sharpie marker, you wanna make, or you're using Sharpie marker to trace that, you wanna make sure it's a permanent marker and not a washable marker because it will come off with the white paint if it's washable. And then you'll end up with gray snow. So I'm gonna add some snow to the top of my North Pole sign. Very cool. Now let's add some snow down to the very bottom of our picture. So you'll notice one of the lines that I have is down here, but I didn't come back and highlight that. That's because we're just gonna use that as a guide. So I'm gonna load it with a pretty generous amount of white paint. And I'm gonna start to tap in some white paint and you'll see it will leave little peaks of paint on the canvas. And so this will dry with a little bit of texture and make it look like a little bit of snow. So I'm just gonna have fun with this and I'm gonna tap in right across that line and straight down into that white that I already painted. I just wanna be really careful that I don't go down into the very, very bottom of the snow globe. Cause that would be outside the snow globe. I'm gonna tap all the way across. And I'm going to add some snow texture to the bottom. And for I think the first time that I've ever done a paint at home kit, it is okay to glob your paint. Just do not run your hand across the painting at this point because you'll end up with a hot mess of white paint and snow all over the place. So be really careful. Please, please be really careful. I will cry with you if our paintings get messed up. 
Not too much glob though. They, you can go overboard, trust me. There comes the point when that little voice inside you says you have globbed too much and you need to listen to it. Okay, so I want a little bit of reflection from that gorgeous glacier colored sky into my snow. So I've got a little bit of paint here that has some of that aqua color in it. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of it and tap just a little tiny bit of aqua color into my snow. I'm not even sure if the camera's gonna pick this up or not, so I just wanna be really careful. It's just a reflection of the sky. And I'm only choosing the aqua color, guys, because if I put a reflection of Santa's red suit and I try to tap red into the white, I'm gonna end up with Santa's pink suit which there's nothing wrong with that, but I would just rather have more of that icy um, sky color in there. All right, we have glopped. So you can feel free to put some snow around the wreath if you want to, maybe along the top of the pole up here if you want to, that is completely fine. Using the same brush, I'm gonna run it along the inside of the snow globe So that it looks like my snow globe is something that I can pick up and hold and shake and it has a reflection of the light from the room that I am in. All right, I am all done with that part so I'm going to put this away. Let's rinse out our little tiny round brush. Where did it go? Okay. That little tiny aqua blue color that I have with that little bit of white, I'm going to pick up a little bit on the tip of my brush. And remember this little tiny patch of white by Santa's Mitten. I'm going to tap in a little bit of that ice blue color because that is a reflection of the sky in the background. We're going to rinse this brush out and we're going to give Santa a little bit of shading in his mitten and in his beard. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of black paint. I'm gonna mix it into the white. And I'm gonna make a soft, soft, barely there gray, like a very pastel, soft gray, where you almost have to squint at the color to even see if there's any gray in there. We're gonna go into Santa's mitten on the inside and we're going to add a little shadow of gray and right on the curve of his beard with a very dry brush I'm just going to scrub in a little bit of gray just to give him a little bit of shadow so it looks a little bit three-dimensional and then if you'd like to write where his wrist comes down we can give him a little bit of gray to show that he's hanging on to that package just to give him just a little bit of dimension all right i'm going to take my brush and rinse it off stick it in the water i'm going to grab that other clean square brush i have grabbing a little bit of white paint i'm going to tap it off onto my plate and running along the belt on the bottom, this should be nice and dry now, I'm going to add some highlight lines. I'm going to come up and almost make the shape of a staple right on the inside of the belt. And then following the top, I'm going to make two lines in white. So we just wanted to give that time to set up and dry right underneath my snow globe. I'm gonna scrub in a little bit of white where it attaches to the snow globe, just to give it a little bit of depth. Make it feel a little bit more three-dimensional. Right, nice job. Let's go ahead and rinse our brushes and we'll get ready for our last two steps for our painting.
The first of our last two steps, we're going to use our Q-tip. So you might have been wondering if I thought maybe you needed to clean out your ears or maybe you needed to clean the little hard to reach places in your Lego pieces. Well, forget about it. That is not what this is for. We're going to use the tip of our Q-tip. We're going to place it into the white paint and grabbing a little bit of white paint at the end of our Q-tip. We're going to use that to put snow in the back of our snow globe. So how can we have a snow globe unless we have gorgeous snow falling in the background? And I found that Q-tips make the perfect dots in the background. So using one side of the Q-tips, you can go ahead and put in as many snowflakes as you want falling in the background. Kind of scatter them everywhere. This is so much fun. Okay, I think I'll stop right there. I'm gonna set that down onto the paper. And finally, our last step is the background. I'm gonna take that large square brush that's been hanging out and waiting to be used the entire time. I'm gonna show you how to blend a gorgeous background for your snow globe. So you can use any of the colors that I've given you on your palette. So maybe if you wanted a yellow background or a straight green background, of course you can do that. I'm gonna show you how to make a gorgeous winter sky background and as we're painting you want to be careful to lift it and get the side edges of your painting so you have this gorgeous wrapped picture so what I do is I'm going to use three colors I'm going to use aqua white and this gorgeous blue color that's been hanging out I'm going to grab a little bit of white and it's all right if it has aqua in it and a little bit of blue and I'm gonna leave both colors unmixed on my brush, and then I'm gonna pat them onto my canvas using my paintbrush. And then picking up a little bit of aqua, I'm gonna add that onto my canvas, just patting the brush, like pat, pat, pat. And then every time I go back and I add a color to my brush, I'm gonna choose either white and blue are white and aqua and then I'm going to go very careful around the snow globe and I'm going to pat these colors together so that they mix together right on my canvas instead of in my plate.
So to wrap this up, the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a square brush and a little bit of black paint and using the very edge we're going to trace over the outside line of our snow globe. So before we do that, make sure your painting has had a chance to set up and dry completely. And then that way you won't hit any of the wet paint. And it'll give your snow globe a nice outline and really help it pop out. Congratulations on a wonderful North Pole snow globe painting and I hope to have you paint with me again. Have a wonderful day.